Saturday, so I avoided that. You got a couple of days. <laughs> That's perfect. All right. It can be. What is it? You're not even. Well, I mean, for those of you that you know work your way up the patch, you know, you know, exercising or well, breaking your throat or something. What is it? So March 14th, and then looking at April. April 11th. Are those both Wednesdays? Both Wednesdays. And 7 p.m. And you're assuming it's going to be here unless otherwise? Yes. meetings will start to schedule out further depending on the issue. The issue of quorum, the only question there is um, do we want to go with the simple majority? We have 10 members assigned to this commission. The commission's requirement is nine members, minimum 15, maximum there are 10 assigned to the commission now, uh, appointed to the commission now. Uh, so our quorum could be five, could be six, could be higher if we wanted to set it higher. I would recommend five only because we're going to be able to get it. Supposedly six people say they're coming and one doesn't show and we have five people show up. I would prefer that we have the meeting. In terms of Robert's rules of order, generally speaking, <coughs> um, Steve, correct me if I'm wrong, anyone else who knows this, uh, the chair generally does not vote except to break a tie? Uh, it's not. You, well, we, let's put it this way. You can decide how you want to. How we want to apply. Robert's rules uh, is really designed more for membership organizations than it is really for government boards. I know that many government boards fall back on, uh, on Robert's rules. Uh, the Charter Commission in the past has never adopted Robert's rules and never has there been a situation where there had to be a time that was broken uh, as the uh, as clear majorities were there for almost all actions. Because there's nothing that the commission does that's binding in terms of getting something on the ballot until the very, very end. Everything that happens before then is really procedural. Uh, when do you want to have meetings? Um, uh, when do you want to set dates for public hearing? So there's really only one dispositive vote, which is your vote at the end to accept the report and to, to place things on the ballot. Um, along the way, you may vote to decide not to do something. As, as you may recall, last summer, there were certain things that the commission decided not to do. But I think, um, uh, Julius, that what's worked, at least in the past, is that the chair has voted, okay. um, and that uh, there hasn't been the necessity to, uh, to break a tie. Now, in the event that there is a tie, and we get to that place at the end, then there will have to be some decisions made uh, at that point, but the history of the commission has been everything really by acclamation or very close to it. Okay. So I raised the issue only to make sure that if, if I wasn't voting, five people would mean that four people are voting in a meeting if I were one of the five. And I, did, and I thought that that was a little bit. Mm -hmm. and, the, and just uh, the other thing is that as far as quorum, typically a quorum is a majority. Of the, so in this particular instance, typical quorum would be six. And that is, I think, the standard procedure pretty much across the board. It's funny, I was asked the same question today um, in a different context. I have nothing to do with the office. So that's, that's what the standard procedure is. If I could just introduce another member of the board, Christopher Hawkins. Christopher, these are the members of the board, and Julius is the chairman of the board. And if you would just introduce yourself to him. I just swore him in. <laughs> you swore him in, okay. I can swear him in any place I find him. <laughs> and again, thank you for serving him. Thank you. Everybody, thanks. Chris thank Jones is up and share there. Joe, too. Hi, Chris. Chris. I think we have a chair here for you. Stephen Marshall. Yeah, 
Well, what is your last name? It's a real name. It's a real name. Sweeney. Oh, I'm not on your ship. He's trying to get you the same patties then. <laughs> when did you change your name? <laughs> So anyone object to like quorum of six? Quorum of six? And then the last question was this notion of voting procedure. There had been a dis um, I think a desire in a large part, and I still think the desire is there, is to have us all agree and do things on, for the most part on acclamation. Um, but I wanted to have us an under, have an understanding, if we don't get to acclamation, how are we doing this? Are we doing it by majority or by supermajority? Uh, and if, if people have any opinion on that. Uh, is, are there any standards that were set, you know, with, with bylaws uh, or guidelines or anything prior to any other uh, that were accepted? Uh, no. Uh, basically, you have an instance where uh, the state statutes provide for the creation of a charter commission by a couple of different methods. Um, as you all know, the mayor has appointed this commission. Once the commission is established, uh, the commission would establish the rules of its own procedures. So, uh, at that, you have complete discretion to decide if you wanted to adopt, and it would be nothing more formal than a motion would be required, uh, to adopt a rule that would say, uh, for example, that in the event of a tie, the chair would vote to break the tie. Uh, or that in order to adopt the final report of the commission, you would need a two-thirds vote, or uh, you know, any anything like that could be done. Now, I will tell you this, that in fairness, is that the every rule that you pass um, is can be amended by the same vote that the rule was enacted. So the idea of a supermajority can be eliminated by a majority. Um, it's it's not the kind of thing where you've got a separate outside set of uh, rules that say, as you do, for example. Um, in certain instances, uh, if there's a protest petition filed regarding certain land use matters, you have to have a supermajority vote that's established independently of those that board's procedures. We don't have that, so whatever rule you set up, you can change it by the same way that you would set up that. This was more for us to just have someone to say of how we were going to operate. This is the first time in the last three sessions that we're going to have 10 members, and I think that should be brought up because you know, your vote or here do get to a situation, a 5 5 or a 4 4 vote. And, and we want to go forward, we don't want to put it off for another week or two, you know, until we get another member. Because uh, you, you do have 10 members, we never had, we always had nine before. The, uh, the, the rule would be if you did nothing, is that you need a majority in order to pass something. So if there was a 5 5 vote, then it would not pass. It's not that you would be stymied. It would be that's that no it would, it would, be, no it would fail because you need the firm. Six. Control. If all ten no. showed up, you need six to pass. So the chairman has no extra power to break the tie. At this point, that's correct, and that could be changed. Of course, at that point, it's normally the case. Again, these are things you guys can decide. But the normal pattern is, if you give a presiding officer chair or whatever the position would be, the power to break ties, that person doesn't normally vote unless there's a tie. So, 